So Inbound.org started as a community for marketers to share interesting stuff happening in our industry, to find and discover interesting people, interesting content. And yeah, so it started by Ryan Fishkin at Mars and Dharma Shah at HubSpot. At least, like, there are communities for this kind of thing in other industries. I was like, where is this place for marketers? So they started it as a side project. And both being uh, running venture-backed software businesses, like Moz, pretty big, HubSpot, very big, um, and both growing fast, they're both very busy. Um, and so that's where I came in, just, can you run this little side project? Uh, so hired some developers, built out the site, um, and it, like, it did die. I think that's the main success metric. Um, and so that, that got very exciting, and then it got to the point where one of, the, one of their companies wanted to sort of make something of it. Um, so HubSpot formally funded it in November 2013. So it graduated from being just a side project with Random Dimesh's personal money uh, to something that's part of the HubSpot ecosystem. And that's been great because we've been able to grow up a team, use some of their resources, uh, continue growing like that mission to be that place for people to share and discover interesting things in marketing and interesting marketers. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the story of Inbound Org so far. Uh, it's been pretty exciting. So we have a team of about 10 all over the world. Um, so a little concentration in Boston. I work out of London. People all over the States, Romania, UK. So at the core of it is a community uh, where people can share interesting links, start interesting discussions, which other members can then upvote and comment on. Um, so a lot of the best stuff on inbound.org uh, you'll see on the homepage is in the comments. Like there's really insightful things people can share, the kinds of things that people maybe won't blog about, maybe won't go and speak about, but can share in a community because it's a little more lightweight way to get involved, a lightweight way to share insights. So how do we engage with these awesome communities which exist, with the people who, like, who matter to us already? Um, so the important thing to realize is it's not your community. Like, that's not yours. Those people and those, the things they're building and the things they're interacting, that's not about you. It's about a problem. It's about something they already care about, um, which is also what your company's all about. At the end of the day, you have that in common, not the company in common. Um, so far as being able to engage with people, if you think back to, like, uh, Andrash's talk, that sort of see, think, do, care framework, Community's not so good around the conversion point. Uh, I'll get onto that in a second, but it can be really good for building that awareness and informing people and the follow-up. Like, um, if you've already got customers, how can they help each other out? How can they share what they're doing? Around that conversion point, uh, so I talked about this a bit yesterday, when you want people to take action, when you want people to buy, to sign up, what you want to do is counter objections. You want to shut, like, shut down a conversation and just make them do that one thing and that one thing only. In community, with, co with this kind of content, you want people to open up, you want to open conversations, you want to create questions. Um, and so in that kind of see, think, do framework, this is where community, that community sits either side of that. Um, yeah, so that, that's where you want to think of as a brand play, is that kind of like awareness, inform, and then sort of care with the customers afterwards. But make it about the problem, it's not about your brand. Um, you can look at some like really big brands doing this, like GoPro. GoPro has that big community. GoPro has that big number of uh, big number of users who create awesome video all the time. It's about that experience, about creating that awesome video. They so happen to be using GoPro, and it just reinforces that whole story. Um, yeah, I, that, that's what you should make it about. If you make it about your brand, you'll kill that whole thing, and you'll be hated, and you don't want to do that. <laughs> This, this is a relatively new thing. So with Google Chrome, you can now publish uh, notifications through, like, uh, natively within, within your Mac app or within Windows and so forth, similar to on your phone. Uh, because this is quite new, there's not quite as much data, there's not as many insights uh, written as something like email. But what we've seen in the community, the people trying this, is the opt-in rates are very high, better than email, and the click-through rates are far exceed email. So it's something to definitely experiment with. If you're publishing regular content, um, I also think things like products going out of stock and you know someone's looked at a product page, for instance, to be able to push a notification that that's back in stock, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you've got to be very careful. I think this is the kind of thing where it works incredibly well, 
too well, such that you can totally abuse it as a tactic, as a channel. Um, so, yeah, to be able to control that. Ideally, you want to be able to control this kind of thing in-house. There are tools. Um, members of Inbound.org are talking about it. I reference it in the resources um, in my talks at inbound.org slash inorbit. Uh, has a bunch of resources and kinds of things Inbound.org members are doing with that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's new. Proceed with caution. Yeah, so email's great for personalization because everyone has an email. Like, it's, it's likely people are going to have emails, email databases. Um, but just putting a first name in, that's not personalization. That's just yelling at someone with their first name. If I yelled at you across the room and then just proceeded on with my like, normal spam message, sure, you're going to pay attention, but then you'll be like, well, who is this guy? Personalization is what do I care about? What do I think about? How can, I, how can you write to that? And then you add the merge tags. That's where you can add, lay that stuff on top. So I shared some examples yesterday of us doing this. And once you start writing to people, that's where you get the first big lift. But then if you use merge tags on top of that, um, that's where those can be really powerful. I think, I think people can kid themselves into getting better results with just using simple merge tags on top of that generic spam. <laughs> That, that, that's not going to last. You're like, if, if, if I'm doing what I'm doing, which is writing to specific personas, and we're competing in the same industry, I'm going to I'm going to clean you out. And I think this 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 is the kind of industry where uh, you have to stay relevant. You have to play. You have to up your game. Um, yeah, personalization is not just merge tags. Personalization is writing to individuals. I think a good first step is to have an individual person in mind. Um, so some, certainly some of the personal emails we send from inbound.org, I write to a specific person and send to a list of people like that. Um, it just helps you frame how you write something just a little bit better. Right, so this is the classic, uh, I'm in a boring industry, how, how do I keep people up to date? There's a lot of discussion on this on Inbound.org, there's a couple of really good blog posts. Go back to that original, like what Andreas was talking about, intent, so people selling boring kitchen appliances, the people buying from them are trying to do up their house, they're trying to get, get, uh, get there. Being able to build content around that kind of stuff and be able to build community around that kind of stuff, that's how you keep people engaged. It's not so much about trying to have people build that habit of trying to buy an appliance every week, like that's not, that's just not going to happen. But be able to stay relevant and keep people engaged such that when they are ready, you're the person they're going to come to. And it's not being, so you're not dependent on that external funnel, you're not dependent on external triggers, you're not dependent on AdWords, on Facebook, on shop like selling on Amazon and so forth.